Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and obviously in this video, I'm gonna be opening up this great big box, which obviously has a Tone King amplifier inside of it. Long story short, or short story long, <laughs> however it turns out, almost exactly two years ago, to this date, I was up in Los Angeles before Winter NAM. I got invited to go visit the Boutique Amp Distributors Warehouse, which is the factory and warehouse where they make Tone King amps and make Friedman amps and make Bogner. I think Morgan amps comes out of there. Uh, Diesel comes out of there. There's a bunch of uh, products being made in that warehouse. So they invited myself and a bunch of fellow YouTubers up there to kind of hang out, film things, make content. We got to hang out with Steve Vai, which was a lot of fun. I did a, a live video with Steve Vai. I'll put a link to that down below because it was a fun time. Uh, but anyways, part of the arrangement was like, hey, come you know, film at this event. We're gonna host you all and we'll take you out for dinner afterwards. But we'd like to get an amp on each one of your channels. And we're like, okay, that sounds fun. We like amps, we're YouTubers. <laughs> So anyways, right after, right after that COVID hits, all of a sudden it gets really hard for Tone King and everyone else at Boutique Amp Distributors to source the components that they need. You know, everyone ran into that and they were already back ordered <laughs> with retailers. So it was about a year of them like, we're still back ordered with retailers. We're trying to, you know, like, take care of our retailers who have, you know, open orders before we send stuff out to, you know, YouTubers and stuff. And I was like, yeah, of course, of course. But every like four or five months, I'd, you know, send an email and be like, hey, how are things going? You know, like looking forward to the amp when you guys can get to it. I didn't, you know, I don't want to feel like a beggar, but I was just reminding them in case they forgot because I was excited about trying out the amp. Uh, and then their warehouse burned down. The warehouse that shares a wall with them had a fire. And of course it affected them. Part of that wall burned down. There was water damage from fire trucks and stuff like that, putting out the fire. And at that point, myself and you know a few other YouTubers I was talking with were like, yeah, we don't think this is gonna happen. <laughs> which is fine, which is fine. It's a bummer to find out, you know, to have the thought like, oh, the amp's probably not gonna come now, which is fine. We still got to have a great time up there and the amp was definitely a bonus on top of that whole experience. Uh, but then, like a week or two ago, I got an email that said, hey, they're making your amp right now. And I was like, what? I was shocked. And then all of a sudden it just showed up at my door one day. So, I don't know, it's been two years since I told them what color I wanted and what model I wanted and stuff like that. I'm assuming they remembered. They had it written down somewhere. Uh, so let's check it out. I'm excited to finally open this thing up. Oh yeah. Sorry I don't have an overhead camera on this. It's pretty cramped up here. <laughs> I'm excited. There we go. Yep, they got my order right. As I remember it, this is the amp I wanted. This is the color I wanted, an Imperial Mark II, which from what I remember is a deluxe reverb style circuit. It's almost exactly the color of the wall that I have over there that you guys can't see, where I moved all the guitars that I used to have behind me. I wanted more space behind me. So I, I beautified the wall across from me and hung them up over there. I'm the one that gets to see that, not you guys. There it is. Oh, that's pretty. It came with a cord for the foot switch. Got a channel and trim foot switch here and the power cord and a manual. Filming amps is always tricky. Do I leave it on the table? Do I put it behind me? It's got this smell. I actually figured out what that smell was. It's got that's like that smell you get when you get a, a new piece of gear, a new guitar, a new amp. There's a certain smell that I always pick up on. And when I was out at the uh, Batiki Amp Distributors Warehouse 
I figured out what that smell was. It's the glue that they use to hold the Tolex down. So you get that smell when you get a new guitar because it's in a guitar case that was just assembled with that Tolex glue. And this has Tolex on it, obviously, so it has that smell. It's like this. Kind of like vanilla mixed with walnut mixed with glue <laughs> sort of thing. It honestly smells really nice. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. All right, so let's go through the features we have here on the front and then I'll turn around and look at the features on the back. We've got volume, tone, and mid bite on the lead channel, a lead and rhythm switch. The rhythm channel is volume, treble, bass, reverb, and then tremolo, speed, and depth. On the back, we've got the power plug, obviously, power on and off. Mode operate and standby, the foot switch plug, the speaker takes eight to 16 ohms, rhythm channel, bypass or enable. And then we have a built-in attenuator here. And then a switch that says HF comp, max or normal high frequency compressor. Is that what that means? The Iron Man 2, the Iron Man 2 is the built-in attenuator here. The Iron Man 2 contains special compensation circuitry to adjust the EQ curve and the amount of compression presence progressively as the attenuation knob is turned from zero to its maximum setting of minus 36 decibels. The HF comp switch allows you to select between two different levels of compensation, max and normal. The max setting will give you a bit more presence and a brighter sound. The normal setting will give you a little more compression and a smoother top end. Interesting. All right, I'm gonna spend a couple minutes figuring out how to set this up. That ought to work, right? I think this is a decent setup so you guys can see it with the overhead cam here and I can hear it sitting right next to it. Hopefully it doesn't blow my ears out too badly. <laughs> What a handsome amplifier. It looks a lot smaller on screen now, doesn't it? Now that it's behind me instead of in front of me. I'd roughly guesstimate that this like baffle trim here is about the same size as one of my Princeton's. So it's a little bit bigger physically, a little bit taller. I'd say about three inches taller than a Princeton. Just, just eyeballing it right now. I just want to look at it. That wouldn't be a very good video if I just looked at it right. You guys want to hear it? Let's hear it. I'm going to use my Fender Made in Mexico Player Plus Strat here because it's just a really good demo platform. It's got humbuckers, it's got singles, it plays really nice. Why wouldn't I use it? There we go. a good start. I haven't even adjusted anything yet. That's just the treble and the bass at noon. Sounds really kind of like warm and creamy right off the bat. Yeah, that sounds nice. Jeez. I'm going to bring up the treble a bit. Might as well dime it, right? Oh, that's a totally fine surf sound right there. I want to max out the reverb because of course I do. See what's on the top end of that. It's not an over-the-top reverb, that's for sure. It's got a nice springy bounce to it. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, it's, it's not going to be an all the way surf reverb because it's an amp in reverb style. It's a, a reverb in amp style reverb. It's a little bit more subdued. It doesn't have that full drip because the reverb isn't hitting the preamp. It's behind the preamp. It sounds really lush. It sounds like a spring. It's got a little bit of a nice little like spring drip to the edge of it. But yeah, the mix isn't even close to a full on outboard surfy style spring reverb pedal. I said pedal, but I meant unit. You know what I mean, right? I usually use pedals to get that sound, but it's based on, you know, a reverb unit. Bass control does a good job of warming up the signal. It doesn't feel like a filter thing, like, oh, here's a bunch of like filtering, introducing bass or allowing a bunch, like a filter that was squashing a bunch of bass. Like it feels like, like it's just warming it up across the range. Same for the treble, very natural feeling sweep across that. channel though that's a great clean sound really sparkly but still has plenty of kind of like like mid oomph to it like a nice kind of like punch in the gut sort of feel yeah that's really nice Fudge that riff. Oh well. Let's try the trim. I've got the foot switch here. <laughs> That's got a hard chop to it. I'll say right now, that's something very different about this amp versus my Princeton's. My Princeton's, the trim circuits on them are honestly really subtle to the point where I don't often use them. Like this is chopping hard. I kind of wish my Princeton's chopped that hard on their trims. That's a lot. <laughs> They're like five on the depth is probably the max for my Princeton's. the attenuator now and then we'll get into some dirty sounds with it we'll turn up that volume a bit immediately more comfortable as far as volume goes that was just one click on the attenuator here's the second click it's now squarely in what I would call bedroom volume levels like that is bedroom safe 
Right, let's turn up the gain, see what happens. Three on the dial. A little bit of low, mid, kind of like crunch, compressed character coming in. I'll pull back that reverb quite a bit. with the neck pickup. Yeah, I'd still consider that clean on the neck pickup. Shows this is right about edge of breakup. Now that I'm on the bridge, it'll cut a little bit more. There's a little bit of grit there. Not a lot, but a little bit. I bet if I pushed it with a boost right now, it'd be squarely into tube distortion. Up to four. Yeah, there we go. Now it's crispy and crunchy. Here it is, three. It feels fat. Like it, you could mistake it for clean, but it's got this fat sound to it. I actually want to pull that bass out quite a bit. Let's bring it back to four. Six. I think six is where I want it. went through all the pickup settings there. I know I didn't call them out. All right, this is getting exciting. All right, up to five now. I feel like I'm getting more low character as I go up on the volume dial. the speakers flubbing but all that dirt and all that drive and all that gain is pushing the lows in an interesting way so I'm gonna roll back the bass that's a little bit better well it's a lot better as far as pulling back the lows but I feel like it could be a little bit warmer That sounds right to me. So as I've gone up on the volume control, I've been pulling back the bass. I'm at three and a half right now. I think I started at six and a half, maybe seven. Can't remember. Check the record. 
check the video. Roll back the footage. <laughs> with the reverb now. Some sloppy noodles there. that amps do when they're turned up that I've encountered. Like some amps will get really spiky and like torn speaker sounding with these big loose gritty spikes and some amps will get really creamy and dark. And this one is pushing further into the creamy and dark kind of range, which is fun. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> It's all about personal preference, you know? Let's pull back the reverb quite a bit. I want to do the volume at seven. Well, there we go. It's got plenty of like crispy texture to it, but the way that the gain kind of blooms and sustains is like this saturated, creamy compression sort of sound. Surprisingly good, like, kind of chugging sound. Not like, you know, heavy metal Ola England style chugging, but... Nineties alternative rock chugging. How about that? Try pulling a bit more bass back into that. What do you guys think? I think that sounds great. I think that sounds really nice. I'm just noodling now. It's really nice that it is at a very comfortable volume right now. Like, it's loud enough that my family would be annoyed if I was playing this while they were watching TV. Let's actually see how quiet the attenuator gets. But what I was going to say is that it's quiet enough that it doesn't feel like it's, you know, at risk of damaging my hearing. Wow. All right, that's all the way down. It gets whisper quiet. I had to bring my recorder setting up to like nearly twice what I'd be running it at to have it bouncing at a normal level. I've got that switch back here. It's like the, the high-end compressor switch or something like that. It's in the up position right now. At this volume, I don't know if I'll be able to tell if there's a difference tonally. It sounds a little bit brighter and clearer in the up position. So if you want to cream your sound of the amp, you can dump that switch down into the down position, but I want the up position. I 
At this volume level, I'm almost certain that this mic is gonna pick up strumming sounds from my guitar. Like this is, this is super duper quiet and the amp is all the way up. Great cleans, great drive, and that's just on the rhythm channel. I haven't even gotten into that lead channel yet. So let's do that now. Wow. Right off the bat, it's almost like Voxy, right? Is that what that's supposed to be? Like a Voxy channel? It's got volume, tone, and mid bite. Let's crank up the attenuator a little bit here. It gets bright. So with the mid bite all the way down, pretty smooth and all the way up. There we go. There's that crispy, loose, like torn speaker grip. Pull back the reverb all the way. I want to explore the gain range on this. sloppy. I don't know if I can say that's more gain than the other channel, but the way that like it's EQ'd filtered is totally different. So here is the rhythm channel with the volume all the way up. Go back to the bridge pickup. Here is the lead channel. It is more gain, especially with that mid bite up. Let's try it with it all the way down. Back to the rhythm channel.
That's been the rhythm channel. Here's the lead. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it doesn't sound like it's two different amps, but the EQ filtering and the way the gain is being pushed is different on the lead channel side. Very interesting. I'm going to have to spend some real time exploring that on my own. <laughs> get a clean sound out of the lead channel. Now it sounds a little bit crispy, even down at two. real like strong voxy maybe edge of like supro kind of vibe maybe so that is the rhythm channel here's the lead A lot of sounds locked up in it. I'm impressed. I really am. It sounds it sounds fantastic. I haven't found a sound yet where I was like, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know. Like it, it just has this really great in room, like warm, present sort of feel. Even with the attenuator pulled back pretty far, it sounded great. It really did. And it's pretty, that's for sure. It is a pretty amp to look at. Let's try hitting it with some, uh, with some pedals. I got a couple pedals on the ground here. I've got a Wampler Ratsbane. I've got a DOD 250 style overdrive. I've got a Music Lily Fuzz. I've got the F-Stop uh, Reverb and Trim by Milkman. And I've got a DD8. <laughs> Let's try on the rhythm channel hitting it with Fuzz. Fuzz kind of, it tells you a lot about an amp because it really hits it with this big wall of static and you can really hear how things are being filtered. That's funny. <laughs> I had it dialed in to be quite a bit like brighter and twangier. And then when I turn on the fuzz, I started messing around with this. And now it, it honestly, it feels pretty close to where I keep the Princeton's dialed in. <laughs> kind of warm, kind of dark, kind of thuddy. But yeah, that's, that's a very familiar sound right now. And I found it by having the fuzz on and kind of dialing around it, which tells you a lot about how I set up my rig. Let's try 
start with the uh, the Rats Bane here. up the gain a bit. I'm sitting right next to it. I'm stacking gain into it. It's gonna, it's gonna feed back. Try hitting that crunch with the 250 pedal I have here. A subtle difference, but it fattens it up. That sounds nice, honestly. There it is on, here it is off. Back on again. I fudged that a little bit, but oh well. I wanna try hitting it with that external reverb from the F-stop. Do it on the neck pickup. Yeah, that's a more surf appropriate sound, hitting the amp with the reverb to kind of like hit that preamp a little bit and you get a little bit more of that drip accentuated, accentuated <laughs> doing that. Where most reverbs built into an amp don't do that. Here is the reverb just from the amp. Much, much more subtle. I mean, it's a great sounding reverb, but it's not an over the top, like surf style reverb, that's for sure. style reverb. Like you put that on to have a little bit of splash, but it's not an over the top of your signal style reverb. Is that, is, do you, can you understand that? Am I explaining that right? All right, what next? I don't know if there is anything next. Oh, fuzz and distortion and the DOD 250. Uh, through the lead channel. We'll try that. Might as well go for it, right? Mm -hmm. 
sounds great. Fuzz now. Here we go. Oh, that sounds great. It has a bit of like a high nasal sort of filter. Sounds like it could be very doomy in a way. Fuzz has an octave setting on it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn that on. Just because this video has a lot of high-end gear in it doesn't mean that it's not also an affordable video. This music lily fuzz, I'll put a picture of it up here. It's great. It's really great. I'm honestly thinking about making the decision soon to kick the Kuvave off the affordable board and go for that music lily instead because I've been using it a lot. Here's what it sounds like on the rhythm channel. Back to the lead channel. Try hitting it with a womp or rat spain now. <laughs> It's too much gain. It's too much gain. The Rathbane is just making this thing feedback for, you know, how close I'm sitting to it. All right, the DoD 250. Again, a slight kind of fattening. Is off. Yeah, it gives like a fattening of the low mids and the gain. Now it's off. Let's see how it handles the spring reverb from the F stop into the lead channel.
that's fun. Not a traditional surf sound, but there's something really fun in like in like a spaghetti western meets like kind of punk surf sort of way. I'm having fun with this amp. I like it. I like it a lot. I think it sounds great. I mean, for how much these things cost, it better sound great, right? I mean, this is not a cheap amplifier. This is not a, you know, on the whim decision for the vast majority of people out there. I can recognize that as well as anyone. Like, it's definitely way outside of, you know, my budget for buying things. I feel very fortunate to be in the situation where I get to have one. The fact that I get to have this amp is, a uh, it's pretty amazing to me. So I'm definitely extremely grateful to uh, to Ohm King and Boutique Amp Distributors for sending this my way. Even though it took two years, like I fully understand why it took two years. Like, I mean, it's no mystery. COVID slowed everything down for a lot of businesses and then they had a fire and all that sorts of stuff. So I'm, I'm definitely well in the territory of thankful and honestly surprised that it even still got here and still happened. I still had a great time two years ago when I visited them up in uh, LA. Yeah. All right, thanks Tone King, thanks Boutique Amp Distributors, everyone else involved. Thanks for watching, everyone at home. Uh, please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon, buy a shirt if you're naked and stay grounded. Bye everybody.